Okay, today I'm gonna be playing one of my favorite DOS games of all time, Jazz Jack Rabbit, which in 1994 was a critical and commercial success and would lead up to a sequel a few years later, later, which I'll get into in just a bit. And apparently it's Demise. But like I said, we'll get to that in just a minute. When crisis strikes, the universe turns to one superhero. Yeah, what's up, Doc? One of great strength and moral character. Quick wit and inventiveness. Incredible speed and flexibility. And also cross dresses. But most importantly, floppy ears and a big gun? Anyways, that's Jazz Jack Rabbit for ya. Our gem Bruce and Cliff Blazinski, good old Cliffy B. You know, you gotta admit that uh, Epic had some really good uh, soundtracks. And we're gonna be using the joystick for this. Uh, DOS vlog. Alright, so, as I was saying before, this game was both a critical and commercial success when it came out in 1994, and did spawn a sequel in 1998. But for some reason here, following that, there was supposed to be a third game, but, well... Well, we all know what happened to the third game, but for those of you who are not familiar with what happened with Jazz Jack Rabbit 3, I'm gonna cut the gory details and I'll just get right to the point. Following Jazz's 2's failure, the company tried to... I should remember correctly, I think the contract between developers and the digital extremes expired? I'm not exactly 100% sure, but anyways, they were trying to find a publisher or a developer, I believe it was a publisher for Jazz 3, but couldn't. And there was actually a leak of an alpha, well, well I got three alpha, of the game in progress, which I thought was incredibly awesome. However, as time went on, it looks like the company struggled to find a publisher and was unable to get the game going. So, so sometime later, in 2001, I believe, Jazz 3 went dormant and about 20 years later, hasn't surfaced since. It's kind of sad, actually, because, believe it or not, I actually looked forward to seeing Jazz Jack Rabbit 3. But, like I said before, the company couldn't find a, uh, like I said before, I believe a publisher. And there were also uh, issues, I think, with one of the companies. And as the rest they say is history. And I have seen footage of Jazz 3. And I thought it looked really good. Considering it was 2000. 2000s-ish. Or whatever. But anyways, enough of the uh, negativity. Let's stick with the positives. Before this game was a huge success and really did uh really did make a name for Clippy B and company, Epic. One of my favorite childhood uh, video game companies. Of course Epic is still in business, but they don't do many games. Or they don't make games, which is kind of sad. Instead they just concentrate on uh, selling digital content. Which I don't use because I've been hearing stories about Epic and well let's just say Pleasant, but I'm probably sure 99% of you knew that already. And of course, I'll be going into Jazz as a history when I review this game some point. I'll probably say fall ish, because I have other projects I gotta work on. Another question that comes to my mind is, since nobody seems to care about Jazz Jackrabbit anymore, uh, who's gonna take the reins and uh, pick up the license? That's another question that needs answering. What are you doing? 
Uh, yeah, Jazz, a Bugs Bunny called. He wants that, uh... Yeah, he wants that pose back. Thanks. What was I talking about before? Oh, yes. As I said before, with Jazz 3, I've seen footage of it. It does look good. And I really want to see a Jazz Jack Rabbit 3 happen. I mean, I don't care who picks it up. Just as long as it's not uh, the same people who brought us to Pokemon forever. Because the less said, the better. Like I said, it's been 20 years. I am dying for a Jazz 3 in the worst way. Like I said, I don't care who picks up the license. Just so as long as they don't butcher it. And I think one company that I think will do a really good job with it is Devolver Digital. Because, I mean, they took the Shadow Warrior game, going off topic here, and they built it from the ground up, and it was really, and it was really good. I'd highly, check it. I'd highly recommend both Shadow Warrior games, actually. Not the classic Redux, though. I'm talking about the one that came out in 2013 and 2017? For, Jan for Shadow Warrior 2? But I digress. I think this is my fourth epic uh, boss vlog in a row. I mean, that's, that's, that's not a bad thing, but I just don't know if it's a coincidence that I'm reviewing four, or not so much reviewing, but rather vlogging about four epic games back to back to back to back. What's a side scroll again without secrets, right? Of course, I've got two choices. I can either go this way to the secret bird level or get the red gem and go to the bonus level. But I think for the sake of argument here, we're just gonna forego the bird level. 
I think it's just luck when you can't get to There's two items that you just can't get to just because of something stupid like a other oh, All. But still good enough for a level clear, though. And now it's time to go to the uh, bonus levels. Now, one thing I can say is that for 1994 standards, this is actually quite impressive. I mean, it's very reminiscent of Mode 7 that the Super Nintendo offered. But not to mention, it's still got that awesome soundtrack, which I think was really well known for. Say a Jazz Jack Rabbit soundtrack on CD. Oh well, beggars can't be choosers. I mean, if I really wanted to, I could just stop the game right here and just listen to the music, but uh, I'm under a time limit, so I can't. Alright, let's get moving here. Between this game and One Must Fall 2097, I don't know which soundtrack is better. Because that's really hard to say. Oh, there's one thing I should also mention, is, uh, speaking of this game, that 
This game promoted the graphics gamepad heavily. I mean, not just uh, not just as a collectible item here, but in the shareware, when you exit the game, it, makes, it, it promotes the graphics gamepad extremely heavily. I mean, but because back then, Gravis was actually one of the more well-known uh, companies to produce an excellent produce a game pads. Interesting enough, I actually have one myself, which I still have to this day. I never really, never really used it all that much, though. But if there's one thing I can say about Gravis, it's nostalgia. Speaking of Gravis, I did make an entire video of uh, Gravis and its legacy. You can check that out on my YouTube channel. Which is where you can find this and all other uh, videos I've made. that uh, there is no uh, plug you can use to plug in the uh, graphics game pad into modern machines. Nowadays, the best majority of controls are USB connected. Which in my opinion is actually a lot nicer because you don't have as long, you don't have much stuff to do. Interestingly enough, I'm using an Xbox One controller as we speak. I probably should have mentioned this sooner, but uh, like I stated before, it's a shame that this game has gone by the wayside because Bethesda picked up Commander Keen, so why can't somebody be willing to pick up Jazz Jackrabbit? I mean, with the right, I mean, if you find the right publisher and the right developers, Jazz Jackrabbit could become an instant classic once again. But, like I said before, I digress. I should probably make another video of uh, five games that trigger inner OCD or obsessive compulsive disorder. And I think this game would be right up there with it. And the concept of you have to find, I'm just, oh, I gotta find every single thing if I want that high score. Or whatnot. Yeah. Yeah. 
Again, another uh, simple case of a uh, one of them all. More try here. Oh well, was over it. Don't you just love games that have incredibly hard to reach secrets?
One thing I usually don't like about certain games nowadays here is that sometimes they make a level too easy, or sometimes they make it so hard that it's pretty much unplayable. But in my opinion, at least this game doesn't suffer from that. Although I think in one of the episodes you could actually skip all the way to the end. I'm not entirely sure. I do know in one of the later missions you can actually skip the level altogether and go straight to a bonus level. But, I digress. Boss music I got is awesome. I mean, it just sets everything perfectly. Okay, that's one picture I would love to have on my wall. Jazz and Jackie, I'm giving you a thumbs up. I don't really care for the ending because I've never seen it. Um, it just pretty much is just a setup for the next episodes, which, like I've said it before a million times, and other, uh, DOS vlogs, it's not uncommon for games to promote their own product in order to uh, encourage people to buy their product. I don't think there's a whole heck of a lot else to uh, talk about. Oh yeah, there's another famous thing right there, Tim Sweeney. And, and of course, uh, big, good old Cliffy B. Um, like I said, there's not much else to talk about. Um, it's a shame that nobody's picked up the license on this game. Um, I think it deserves to be brought back. Even if you have to uh, find another publisher and developer to get this franchise going once again, and maybe update it with HD visuals, I think, in my opinion, it would 
if that was to happen, I think it would be an instant classic. But that's just one person's opinion. With that said, thanks to everyone who listened. I will see everyone next time.